Question 3c, part 1. Starting from the identity sine theta plus 2 theta equals sine theta cos 2 theta plus cos theta sine 2 theta and using the double angle formulae, prove the identity sine 3 theta equals 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta. Expanding sine of theta plus 2 theta, we have sine theta cos 2 theta plus cos theta sine 2 theta. Now cos 2 theta is a double angle and that can be expressed in terms of the square of sine. So cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And sine of 2 theta can be expressed as 2 sine theta cos theta. So we have sine theta outside of 1 minus 2 sine squared theta plus cos theta outside of 2 sine theta cos theta. And expanding the brackets, we get sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta plus 2 sine theta cos squared theta. And cos squared theta can be expressed in terms of sine squared theta using a Pythagorean identity. So cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So we have sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta plus 2 sine theta multiplied by 1 minus sine squared theta. And expanding the brackets here, that equals sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta plus 2 sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. And collecting the like terms, that equals 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta, which equals sine 3 theta as required. Part 2. Hence solve the equation sine 3 theta equals 2 sine theta for theta greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. Starting with the equation sine 3 theta equals 2 sine theta, we can apply the identity from part 1 to replace sine 3 theta with 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. So the equation becomes 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta equals 2 sine theta. Notice we have two terms in sine theta, so we can combine the like terms by subtracting 2 sine theta from both sides of the equation. And we obtain sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta equals 0. And factorising out sine theta from the left hand side, we have sine theta multiplied by 1 minus 4 sine squared theta equals 0. And we have a difference of two squares in the brackets here, so factorising this difference of two squares, we get sine theta multiplied by 1 minus 2 sine theta multiplied by 1 plus 2 sine theta equals 0. Now, to solve this equation, we can consider three cases. And the first case is that sine theta can equal 0. And when sine theta equals 0 and solving that for theta, we get theta is equal to 0, pi, or 2 pi. In case 2, we can have 1 minus 2 sine theta equals 0 for the entire left-hand side to equal 0. So solving 1 minus 2 sine theta equals 0, subtracting 1 from both sides of the equation, we get negative 2 sine theta equals negative 1. And dividing both sides by negative 2, we get sine theta is equal to half. And so theta is equal to pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. So we're dealing with quadrants 1 and 2 since the ratio is positive. And in case 3, we have 1 plus 2 sine theta equals 0. So making sine theta the subject of the formula, we get sine theta is equal to negative half. And the angle theta will be in quadrants 3 or 4, since the ratio is negative. So that's from the all stations to central. So solving this for theta, we get theta is equal to 7 pi over 6, or 11 pi over 6. And combining the solutions from all three cases, we get theta is equal to 0, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, or 11 pi over 6. Question 2e, part 1. Express cos x minus sin x in the form r cos x plus alpha, where alpha is in radians. Expanding r cos x plus alpha using a compound angle expansion we get r multiplied by cos x cos alpha minus sin x sin alpha. And expanding the brackets, that equals r cos alpha cos x minus r sin alpha sin x. Now this is identical to cos x minus sin x. So writing all that as an identity, we have cos x minus sin x is identical to 
r cos alpha cos x minus r sin alpha sin x. Now the coefficient of cos x on the left hand side equals 1, which must equal the coefficient of cos x on the right hand side. So r cos alpha must equal 1, and negative r sin alpha must equal negative 1. So by equating coefficients, we form these two equations. r cos alpha equals 1, we'll call that equation 1, and r sin alpha equals 1, and we'll call that equation number 2. Now solving equations 1 and 2 simultaneously for r and alpha, we take both equations, square them and add them together. That'll eliminate the terms involving cos alpha and sine alpha. So r squared cos squared alpha equals 1, r squared sine squared alpha equals 1. So adding these two equations together, we get r squared outside of cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha, since r squared is a common factor, and that equals 1 plus 1, which equals 2. And using a Pythagorean identity, cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha equals 1. So we end up with r squared is equal to 2, taking the positive square root of both sides. Since r represents an amplitude, we have r is equal to the square root of 2. Next, to find alpha, we can take equation number 2 and divide it by equation number 1. So we have r sine alpha over r cos alpha equals 1. The two r's cancel, we end up with sine alpha over cos alpha, which equals tan alpha, so this forms the equation tan alpha equals 1. And taking the inverse tan of both sides to make alpha the subject of the formula, we get alpha is equal to pi over 4. Therefore, cos x minus sine x is identical to the square root of 2 times cos of x plus pi over 4. Part 2. Hence, or otherwise, sketch the graph of y equals cos x minus sin x for x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. The graph of y equals cos x minus sin x is identical to the graph of y equals square root of 2 cos of x plus pi over 4. And this is from part 1. Now this is a cosine curve with an amplitude square root of 2, period 2 pi, and a phase shift pi over 4 to the left. Here is a sketch of the curve y equals cos x minus sin x, which is identical to the curve y equals the square root of 2 cos of x plus pi over 4. It has a y-intercept of 1. The curve ends at this point, which is at 2 pi comma 1. It has x-intercepts at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. The minimum point occurs here at 3 pi over 4 comma negative square root of 2. And the maximum value occurs here at 7 pi over 4 comma square root of 2. Question 2D, part 1. Write 8 cos x plus 6 sin x in the form a cos x minus alpha, where a is greater than 0, and alpha is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to pi over 2. We start by writing the identity a cos of x minus alpha is identical to 8 cos x plus 6 sin x. Then we expand the left-hand side using a compound angle expansion. So the expansion of a cos of x minus alpha is a cos alpha cos x plus a sin alpha sin x. And this is identical to 8 cos x plus 6 sin x. Then we equate the coefficients of cos x and sin x. So the coefficient of cos x on the left-hand side is a cos alpha. And the coefficient of cos x on the right-hand side is 8. So the coefficients must be equal. So a cos alpha is equal to 8, and a sine alpha is equal to 6. And this is where we get these two equations. So a cos alpha is equal to 8, and a sine alpha is equal to 6. We'll call those equations 1 and 2. And we're going to solve these simultaneously to find the values of a and alpha. So if we take equation 1 and square it, and take equation 2 and square that and add those two together, we get a squared outside of cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 8 squared plus 6 squared, which is equal to 100. And cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 1, using a Pythagorean identity. 
So we have a squared is equal to 100, and then taking the positive square root of both sides, we get a is equal to 10. Now if we take equation 2 and divide it by equation 1, we can find the value of alpha. So a sine alpha over a cos alpha is equal to 6 over 8. Now the a's cancel, and we have sine alpha over cos alpha, which is equivalent to tan alpha. So we have tan alpha is equal to 3 over 4. And making alpha the subject of the formula, we get alpha is equal to the inverse tan of 3 over 4, and I've left it in exact form. So therefore, 8 cos x plus 6 sin x is identical to 10 cos of x minus the inverse tan of 3 over 4. Part 2. Hence or otherwise, solve the equation 8 cos x plus 6 sin x equals 5 for x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. Give your answers correct to three decimal places. From part 1, 8 cos x plus 6 sin x is identical to 10 cos of x minus the inverse tan of 3 over 4. So solving 8 cos x plus 6 sin x equals 5 is identical to solving 10 cos of x minus the inverse tan of 3 over 4 equals 5. So setting up that equation, we get 10 cos of x minus the inverse tan of 3 over 4 equals 5. So to solve for x, we first divide both sides by 10. So we have cos of x minus the inverse tan of 3 over 4 equals half. Taking the inverse cos of both sides, we have x minus the inverse tan of 3 over 4 is equal to the inverse cos of half, which equals pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. So that's a quadrant 1 or quadrant 4 angle, since we have a positive ratio there. Then adding the inverse tan of 3 over 4 to both of these values to make x the subject, we get x equals pi over 3 plus the inverse tan of 3 over 4 or 5 pi over 3 plus the inverse tan of 3 over 4. So evaluating these two expressions, we get x equals 1.691 or 5.879 correct to three decimal places. Question 4b. By making the substitution t equals tan theta over 2 or otherwise, Show that cosec theta plus cot theta equals cot theta over 2. From the left-hand side, we have left-hand sides equal to cosec theta plus cot theta, which equals to 1 over sine theta plus 1 over tan theta. Now sine theta is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared, and tan theta is equal to 2t over 1 minus t squared, where t is equal to tan theta over 2. Hence, expressing the left-hand side in terms of t, we have left-hand sides equal to 1 plus t squared over 2t plus 1 minus t squared over 2t. Now, we're adding two fractions with a common denominator so we can combine the numerators together. So, left-hand sides equal to 1 plus t squared plus 1 minus t squared over 2t. Now, the t squared here cancels with the t squared here, so this fraction simplifies to 2 over 2t, which is equal to 1 over t. Now t is equal to tan theta over 2, hence 1 over t is the reciprocal of tan theta over 2, which is equal to cot theta over 2, which equals the right-hand side as required. Question 1d. Using the sum of two cubes, simplify sine cube theta plus cos cube theta over sine theta plus cos theta minus 1 for theta greater than 0 and less than pi over 2. a cubed plus b cubed factorizes into a plus b in brackets multiplied by a squared minus ab plus b squared. Now in this case, a represents sine theta and b represents cos theta. Hence, sine cubed theta plus cos cubed theta over sine theta plus cos theta minus 1 can be written as sine theta plus cos theta in brackets multiplied by sine squared theta minus sine theta cos theta plus cos squared theta over sine theta plus cos theta minus 1. Now the sine theta plus cos theta in brackets in the numerator cancels with sine theta plus cos theta in the denominator. So this equals sine squared theta minus sine theta cos theta plus cos squared theta minus 1. Now sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1 because it's a Pythagorean identity. So we end up with 
1 minus 1, so that equals 0, and we're left with negative sine theta cos theta. So this equals negative sine theta cos theta. And recall that sine 2 theta, being a double angle, is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. Hence, negative sine theta cos theta is equal to negative half sine 2 theta. Question 2a. By using the substitution t equals tan theta over 2, or otherwise, show that 1 minus cos theta over sine theta equals tan theta over 2. Starting from the left hand side, we have left hand side equals 1 minus cos theta over sine theta. Now sine theta is a common denominator, so we can express 1 minus cos theta over sine theta as a difference of two fractions. So left hand side is equal to 1 over sine theta minus cos theta over sine theta. Now cos theta over sine theta is equal to 1 over tan theta. So left hand side is equal to 1 over sine theta minus 1 over tan theta. Now sine theta is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared and tan theta is equal to 2t over 1 minus t squared where t is equal to tan theta over 2. Hence 1 over sine theta minus 1 over tan theta is equal to 1 plus t squared over 2t minus 1 minus t squared over 2t. So we have a difference of two fractions with a common denominator of 2t. So we can combine the numerators together. So that equals 1 plus t squared minus 1 minus t squared in brackets over 2t. So expanding the brackets and collecting the like terms, that equals to 2t squared over 2t. And this simplifies to t, and t is equal to tan theta over 2. Question 6b. It can be shown that sine 3 theta equals 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta for all values of theta. Do not prove this. Use this result to solve sine 3 theta plus sine 2 theta equals sine theta for theta greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. The first step is to move sine theta from the right hand side to the left hand side. So the equation becomes sine 3 theta plus sine 2 theta minus sine theta equals 0. Now sine 3 theta can be replaced with the identity 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta and sine 2 theta is a double angle and that can be replaced with 2 sine theta cos theta. So the equation becomes 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta minus sine theta equals 0. Next we can combine the like terms so we have 3 sine theta minus sine theta becomes 2 sine theta so the equation now is 2 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta equals 0. Dividing all terms by 2 we get sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta plus sine theta cos theta equals 0. Next we factorise sine theta from the terms on the left hand side. So that equals sine theta multiplied by 1 minus 2 sine squared theta plus cos theta equals 0. Now sine squared theta can be represented in terms of cos squared theta using a Pythagorean identity. So sine squared theta is going to be replaced with 1 minus cos squared theta to keep the terms inside the brackets in terms of cos. So the equation becomes sine theta multiplied by 1 minus 2 outside of 1 minus cos squared theta plus cos theta equals 0. Expanding the brackets here, the equation now is sine theta multiplied by 1 minus 2 plus 2 cos squared theta plus cos theta equals 0, which simplifies to sine theta multiplied by 2 cos squared theta plus cos theta minus 1 equals 0. Now we have a quadratic expression inside the brackets here which can be factorised. So the equation now is sine theta multiplied by 2 cos theta minus 1 multiplied by cos theta plus 1 equals 0. And this forms three cases. So case 1, we have sine theta is equal to 0 for the expression to equal 0. So solving sine theta equals 0, we get theta is equal to 0, pi or 2 pi. Case 2, we have 2 cos theta minus 1 equals 0. So we have cos theta is equal to half if we rearrange the formula, taking the inverse cos of both sides, we get Theta is equal to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, since the ratio is positive. So this is a quadrant 1 and a quadrant 4 angle. And for case 3, we have cos theta plus 1 equals 0. Rearranging the equation, we get cos theta is equal to negative 1. And this is a boundary angle, so we have theta is equal to pi. So combining the results from all three cases, we have theta is equal to 0, pi over 3, pi, 5 pi over 3, or 2 pi.
Question 2b, part 1. Express 3 sine x plus 4 cos x in the form a sine x plus alpha, where alpha is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to pi over 2. Starting off with the identity, 3 sine x plus 4 cos x is identical to a sine of x plus alpha. Apply a compound angle expansion to the right hand side, which then gives us the identity 3 sine x plus 4 cos x is identical to a multiplied by sine x cos alpha plus sine alpha cos x. Next, expand the brackets on the right hand side, which then gives us 3 sine x plus 4 cos x is identical to a cos alpha sine x plus a sine alpha cos x. Notice that I've switched the sine x and the cos alpha around, which will make equating coefficients of sine x and cos x a little bit easier. So the next step is to equate the coefficients of sine x and cos x. So the coefficient of sine x on the left hand side is identical to or equal to the coefficient of sine x on the right hand side. So a cos alpha must equal 3 and a sine alpha must equal 4. And I've written these here as two equations. So a cos alpha equals 3, a sine alpha equals 4, and I've called them equations 1 and 2 respectively. Next, we solve equations 1 and 2 simultaneously to find the values of a and alpha. So taking equation 1 and squaring it, and equation 2 and squaring it, and adding those two together, we get a squared cos squared alpha plus a squared sine squared alpha is equal to 9 plus 16. And factorising out a squared, on the left hand side we get a squared multiplied by cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha which equals 25 and cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha equals 1 because it's a Pythagorean identity. So we have a squared is equal to 25 and taking the square root of both sides we get a is equal to 5 and it's the positive square root since a needs to be greater than 0. Now from equation number 1 we have a cos alpha equals 3 and we found the value of a with a equals 5 so substituting a equals 5 into equation number one, we can then solve for alpha. Hence, five cos alpha equals three. Dividing both sides of the equation by five, we get cos alpha is equal to three over five. Therefore, alpha is equal to the inverse cos of three over five. So I've left it in exact form. Therefore, three sine x plus four cos x is identical to five sine of x plus the inverse cos of three over five. Part 2. Hence, or otherwise, solve 3 sine x plus 4 cos x equals 5 for x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. Give your answer, or answers, correct to two decimal places. From part 1, solving the equation 3 sine x plus 4 cos x equals 5 is equivalent to solving 5 sine of x plus the inverse cos of 3 over 5 equals 5. Dividing both sides of this equation by 5, we get sine of x plus the inverse cos of 3 over 5 equals 1. Taking the inverse sine of both sides, we have x plus the inverse cos of 3 over 5 is equal to pi over 2. Subtracting the inverse cos of 3 over 5 from both sides of the equation, we get x equals pi over 2 minus the inverse cos of 3 over 5. x equals 0 0.6435 and so on, and that rounds to 0 0.644 correct to three decimal places. Question 4b, part 1. Express 2 cos theta plus 2 cos theta plus pi over 3 in the form r cos theta plus alpha, where r is greater than 0 and alpha is greater than 0 and less than pi over 2. Starting with the expression 2 cos theta plus 2 cos theta plus pi over 3, we can expand 2 cos theta plus pi over 3 using a compound angle expansion. So the expression can be written as 2 cos theta plus 2 multiplied by cos theta cos pi over 3 minus sine theta sine pi over 3. Now cos pi over 3 is equal to half and sine pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So the expression becomes 2 cos theta plus 2 cos theta multiplied by half minus 2 sine theta multiplied by the square root of 3 over 2. And that equals 2 cos theta plus cos theta minus the square root of 3 sine theta. And collecting the like terms, that equals 3 cos theta minus the square root of 3 sine theta. Next, we write the identity 3 cos theta minus the square root of 3 sine theta is identical to 
are cos of theta plus alpha. And expanding the right hand side using a compound angle expansion, 3 cos theta minus the square root of 3 sine theta is identical to r cos alpha cos theta minus r sine alpha sine theta. Next, we equate the coefficients of cos theta and sine theta on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now, r cos alpha is equal to 3, and r sine alpha is equal to the square root of 3. So the coefficient of cos theta on the right-hand side, which is r cos alpha, must equal the coefficient of cos theta on the left-hand side, so that's where that comes from. And equation number 2, r sine theta is equal to the square root of 3, comes from the fact that r sine alpha, which is the coefficient of sine theta, on the right hand side must equal the square root of 3 on the left hand side. And we form these two equations which need to be solved simultaneously to find r and alpha. So taking equation 1 and squaring it and adding it to the square of equation number 2, we get r squared cos squared alpha plus r squared sine squared alpha is equal to 9 plus 3. Factorising out r squared, we get r squared multiplied by cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 12, and cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 1 because this is the Pythagorean identity. So we have r squared is equal to 12, and taking the positive square root of both sides, r is equal to 2 root 3. Now from equation number 2, since we have the value of r, we can substitute r into equation number 2, and we can solve for alpha, so 2 root 3 sine alpha is equal to root 3. And dividing both sides by 2 root 3, we get sine alpha is equal to half. And taking the inverse sine of both sides, we get alpha is equal to pi over 6. Therefore, 2 cos theta plus 2 cos theta plus pi over 3 is identical to 2 root 3 cos theta plus pi over 6. Part 2. Hence, or otherwise, Solve 2 cos theta plus 2 cos theta plus pi over 3 equals 3 for theta greater than 0 and less than 2 pi. Start by writing the equation 2 root 3 cos theta plus pi over 6 equals 3. Next, divide both sides of the equation by 2 root 3. So we get cos theta plus pi over 6 is equal to 3 over 2 root 3. Now rationalising the denominator of the right hand side, 3 over 2 root 3 is equal to root 3 over 2. And taking the inverse cos of both sides of the equation, we have theta plus pi over 6 is equal to pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, so that's a quadrant 1, quadrant 4 angle, and then 13 pi over 6, so we go beyond 2 pi radians. Subtracting pi over 6 from these three results, we get theta is equal to 0, 5 pi over 3, and 2 pi but theta needs to be greater than 0 and less than 2 pi. Hence, theta equals 0 and theta equals 2 pi cannot be included in the solution set. So therefore, theta is equal to 5 pi over 3. Question 5a. In the diagram, q, x0, y0 is a point on the unit circle x squared plus y squared equals 1 at an angle theta from the positive x axis where theta is greater than negative pi over 2 and less than pi over 2. The line through n, 0, 1, and q intersects the line y equals negative 1 at p. The points t, 0, y0, and s, 0, negative 1, are on the y-axis. Part 1. Use the fact that triangle TQN and triangle SPN are similar to show that sp equals 2 cos theta over 1 minus sine theta. In triangle OQT, angle OQT is equal to theta as they are alternate angles on parallel lines, where QT is parallel to the x-axis. Also note that angle OTQ is a right angle, which makes triangle OQT a right angle triangle, and this means that right angle trigonometry may be applied to find the lengths of QT and OT in terms of theta. Also note that OQ and ON are both one unit in length as they are radii of the unit circle. So I've started this by noting down what I've just said. 
angle OQT is equal to theta, and here's the reason, and triangle OQT is right angled with OQ is equal to 1. Now applying right angle trigonometry, QT over OQ is equal to cos theta, now OQ is equal to 1, hence QT is equal to cos theta. OT over OQ is equal to sine theta, and OQ is equal to 1, hence OT is equal to sine theta. Now NT is equal to ON minus OT, hence NT is equal to 1 minus sine theta. Now NS is equal to 2, since that's the diameter of the unit circle. Now applying the property of similar triangles, NT over NS is equal to QT over SP where nt is equal to 1 minus sine theta, and ns is equal to 2, and qt is equal to cos theta, and sp is, of course, itself sp. So rearranging this equation to make sp the subject of the formula, so swapping both sides around and inverting both fractions, we have sp over cos theta is equal to 2 over 1 minus sine theta, therefore sp is equal to 2 cos theta over 1 minus sine theta as required. Part 2. Show that cos theta over 1 minus sine theta equals sec theta plus tan theta. Starting from the left hand side, we have left hand side equals cos theta over 1 minus sine theta. Multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 1 plus sine theta, that gives us left hand side equals cos theta plus cos theta sine theta over 1 minus sine squared theta. 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cos squared theta by application of a Pythagorean identity. So left hand side is equal to cos theta plus cos theta sine theta over cos squared theta. And expressing this fraction as the sum of two fractions with a common denominator of cos squared theta, that equals cos theta over cos squared theta plus cos theta sine theta over cos squared theta. And simplifying these fractions, that equals 1 over cos theta plus sine theta over cos theta which equals sec theta plus tan theta, which equals the right-hand side as required. Part 3. Show that angle SNP equals theta over 2 plus pi over 4. Angle SNP is equal to angle ONQ. So by determining angle ONQ, we've determined angle SNP. Now OQ and ON are equal in length, since they are radii of the unit circle, which makes triangle ONQ isosceles. This means the base angles are equal. So to determine the size of the base angles, we need to find the value of this angle here, the apex of the isosceles triangle. And this angle here is complementary with theta. So this angle here, NOQ, is equal to pi over 2 minus theta. Noting this down, ON equals OQ, hence triangle ONQ is isosceles, and angle SNP equals angle ONQ, equals angle OQN, which are the base angles of the isosceles triangle. Angle QOT, which is the apex of the isosceles triangle, is equal to pi over 2 minus theta. Hence, angle ONQ, which is one of the base angles of the isosceles triangle, is equal to pi minus pi over 2 minus theta in brackets, divided by 2 which equals to pi over 2 plus theta divided by 2, which equals to theta over 2 plus pi over 4. Therefore, angle SNP is equal to theta over 2 plus pi over 4 as required. Part 4. Hence, or otherwise, show that sec theta plus tan theta equals tan theta over 2 plus pi over 4. In right angle triangle NSP, side SP is equal to 2 cos theta over 1 minus sine theta, which equals to 2 sec theta plus 2 tan theta. That's from parts 1 and 2. Side NS is equal to 2 units, since NS represents the diameter of the unit circle. And angle SNP is equal to theta over 2 plus pi over 4. And that's from part 3. Putting this all together, we can write SP is equal to 2 cos theta over 1 minus sine theta, which equals to 2 sec theta plus 2 tan theta from parts 1 and 2. In triangle NSP, angle 
SNP is equal to theta over 2 plus pi over 4, and that's from part 3. Triangle NSP is right angled, with angle NSP is equal to theta over 2. Hence, tan of angle SNP is equal to SP over NS, so that's the opposite over the adjacent. Tan of theta over 2 plus pi over 4 is equal to 2 sec theta plus 2 tan theta over 2, the 2's will cancel. Therefore, sec theta plus tan theta is equal to tan of theta over 2 plus pi over 4, as required. Part 5. Hence, or otherwise, solve sec theta plus tan theta equals the square root of 3, where theta is greater than negative pi over 2 and less than pi over 2. From part 4, sec theta plus tan theta is identical to tan of theta over 2 plus pi over 4. So solving sec theta plus tan theta equals the square root of 3 is identical to solving tan of theta over 2 plus pi over 4 is equal to the square root of 3. Taking the inverse tan of both sides, we get theta over 2 plus pi over 4 is equal to negative 2 pi over 3, pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. Just taking into account the stated domain, which is theta greater than negative pi over 2 and less than pi over 2. So I'm just thinking ahead a little bit here. Subtracting pi over 4 from both sides of the equation, we get theta over 2 is equal to negative 11 pi over 12, pi over 12, or 13 pi over 12. And then multiplying both sides of the equation by 2 to make theta the subject, we get theta is equal to negative 11 pi over 6, pi over 6, or 13 pi over 6. But theta is greater than negative pi over 2 or less than pi over 2. So the only solution that satisfies this domain is pi over 6. So therefore, theta is equal to pi over 6. Question 8. The angle theta satisfies sine theta equals 5 over 13, and theta is greater than pi over 2 and less than pi. What is the value of sine 2 theta? Theta is in quadrant 2, hence 2 theta will be in quadrant 4, and sine 2 theta will be negative. That immediately rules out options A or C, since both of those values are positive. Now using a double angle expansion, sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. Now sine theta is equal to 5 over 13, so we need to find the value of cos theta. So using a right angle triangle and applying Pythagoras' theorem, we have the hypotenuse of 13, an opposite side of 5, the adjacent side will be negative 12 since theta is obtuse. Hence cos theta is equal to negative 12 over 13. Therefore, sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta, which equals 2 times 5 over 13 times negative 12 over 13, which equals to negative 120 over 169. Therefore, the answer is option D. Question 12a, part 1. Write root 3 cos x minus sine x in the form 2 cos x plus alpha, where alpha is greater than 0 and less than pi over 2. Start by writing the identity. 2 cos of x plus alpha is identical to root 3 cos x minus sine x. Dividing both sides of the identity by 2, we have cos of x plus alpha is identical to root 3 over 2 cos x minus half sine x. Expanding the left-hand side of the identity using a compound angle expansion, we have cos x cos alpha minus sine x sine alpha is identical to root 3 over 2 cos x minus half sine x. Equating the coefficients of cos x on both sides of the identity, we have cos of alpha is equal to root 3 over 2. And taking the inverse cos of both sides of this equation, we have alpha is equal to pi over 6. Therefore, root 3 cos x minus sine x is identical to 2 cos of x plus pi over 6. Part 2. Hence, or otherwise, solve root 3 cos x equals 1 plus sine x, where x is greater than 0 and less than 2 pi. Rearrange the equation root 3 cos x equals 1 plus sine x by subtracting sine x from both sides of the equation. So the equation now becomes root 3 cos x minus sine x equals 1. Now from part 1, root 3 cos x minus sine x is identical to 2 cos of x plus pi over 6. So now we can solve the equation 2 cos of x plus pi over 6 equals 1. 
Dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we have cos of x plus pi over 6 equals half. Taking the inverse cos of both sides of the equation, we get x plus pi over 6 is equal to pi over 3, or 5 pi over 3. And subtracting pi over 6 from both of these values, we have x is equal to pi over 6, or 3 pi over 2. Question 10. The graph of the function y equals cos of 2t minus pi over 3 is shown below. What are the coordinates of the point p? Point P represents an x-intercept of the graph, so that's a point where the y value is equal to 0. So we can find the x-coordinate of point P by solving the equation cos of 2t minus pi over 3 equals 0. Taking the inverse cos of both sides of the equation, we have 2t minus pi over 3 is equal to pi over 2, or 3 pi over 2. Adding pi over 3 to both sides of the equation, we have 2t is equal to 5 pi over 6, or 11 pi over 6. Dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we get t is equal to 5 pi over 12, or 11 pi over 12. Now p is the second x-intercept to the right of the origin, hence t equals 11 pi over 12, therefore the answer is option c. Question 6. What is the general solution of the equation? 2 sine squared x minus 7 sine x plus 3 equals 0. We can start by letting u equal sine x and solving the quadratic equation in terms of u. So solving 2u squared minus 7u plus 3 equals 0, we can factorise the left hand side. We have 2u minus 1 in brackets multiplied by u minus 3 in brackets equals 0. Substituting sine x for u, we have 2 sine x minus 1 in brackets multiplied by sine x minus 3 in brackets equals 0. Now sine x minus 3 equals 0 has no solution. However, 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0 does have a solution. So sine x is equal to half. Taking the inverse sine of both sides, we have x is equal to pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6 and so on. Which is equal to pi over 6, pi minus pi over 6, 2 pi plus pi over 6 and so on. And the option that follows that pattern is option D. Question 4. What is the value of tan alpha when the expression 2 sine x minus cos x is written in the form square root of 5 multiplied by sine of x minus alpha? By expanding root 5 sine of x minus alpha using a compound angle expansion, we can write the identity root 5 sine x cos alpha minus root 5 sine alpha cos x is identical to 2 sine x minus cos x. Next, we'll equate the coefficients of sine x on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the identity. So, root 5 cos alpha must equal 2. I'm going to write that as an equation here. Next, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by root 5. So cos alpha is equal to 2 over root 5. Now cos alpha is the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to represent that using a right angle triangle. So here's the adjacent side. Here's the hypotenuse. The opposite side to alpha can be found by Pythagoras' theorem, and it's equal to 1. So it's root 5 all squared minus 2 squared, which is equal to 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. Hence tan alpha is opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over 2, which is equal to half. Therefore, the answer is option C. Question 9. Which of the following is a general solution of the equation sine 2x equals negative half? Given that the sine ratio is negative, the angle 2x lies in either quadrants 3 or 4. So taking the inverse sine of both sides of the equation, we get 2x is equal to 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, then going around the circle we get 19 pi over 6 and 23 pi over 6, and so on. Dividing both sides by 2, we get x is equal to 7 pi over 12, 11 pi over 12, 19 pi over 12, 23 pi over 12, and so on. Expressing these values in terms of pi over 12, 
we get x equals pi over 2 plus pi over 12, which equals 7 pi over 12, pi minus pi over 12, which equals 11 pi over 12, 3 pi over 2 plus pi over 12, which equals 19 pi over 12, and 2 pi minus pi over 12, which equals 23 pi over 12. Now this corresponds to values of n, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on. And the option that represents this pattern is option D. Question 6. It is given that sine x equals 1 over 4, where x is greater than pi over 2 and less than pi. What is the value of sine 2x? By applying a double angle expansion, we have sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. Now sine x is equal to 1 over 4, but x is obtuse, which means cos x will be negative. To find the value of cos x, we can use a right angle triangle. Now if sine x is equal to 1 over 4, that means the opposite side is 1, the hypotenuse is 4, hence the adjacent side will be negative square root of 15 since it's in quadrant 2. So sine 2x is equal to 2 multiplied by 1 over 4 multiplied by negative root 15 over 4, which equals negative root 15 over 8, hence the answer is option B. Question 11D. By expressing the square root of 3 sine x plus 3 cos x in the form a sine x plus alpha, solve the square root of 3 sine x plus 3 cos x equals the square root of 3 in the interval x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. The first step is to find the values of a and alpha in the identity a sine x plus alpha is identical to the square root of 3 sine x plus 3 cos x. Expanding the left hand side, since we have the sine of a compound angle, we have a outside of sine x cos alpha plus sine alpha cos x is identical to the square root of 3 sine x plus 3 cos x. Expanding the left hand side further and switching the sine x and the cos alpha around, we have a cos alpha sine x plus a sine alpha cos x is identical to the square root of 3 sine x plus 3 cos x. So I just wanted the terms involving alpha to be written first. Now equating the coefficients of sine x and cos x, we have a cos alpha is equal to the square root of 3, and a sine alpha is equal to 3, since a cos alpha is the coefficient of sine x, and that should equal the coefficient of sine x on the right-hand side, which is the square root of 3, and likewise for the coefficient of cos x. So we can write that as two equations. a cos of alpha is equal to the square root of 3, and call that equation number 1. And a sine of alpha is equal to 3, and we'll call that equation number 2. Now to find the value of a, we square both equations and add them together. So equation 1 squared plus equation number 2 squared. So we have a squared cos squared alpha plus a squared sine squared alpha is equal to the square root of 3 all squared, plus 3 squared. Factorizing a squared on the left-hand side, we have a squared outside of cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 12, and we have a Pythagorean identity here, and that's equal to 1. Hence, a squared is equal to 12. I'm taking the square root of both sides when we're only interested in the positive square root. a is equal to 2 square root of 3. And we'll call that number 3 there. Now, to find the value of the auxiliary angle alpha, we take equation number 2 and divide it by equation number 1, because that'll cancel out the a, and we end up with a term involving tan of alpha. So a sine of alpha over a cos of alpha is equal to 3 over the square root of 3, and the a's cancel, and we end up with tan of alpha is equal to the square root of 3. And taking the inverse tan of both sides, we have alpha is equal to 60 degrees, or pi over 3 radians, but we're working in radians, so pi over 3 is the value of alpha. Now to solve the equation, a sine of x plus alpha is equal to the square root of 3. Now that we have the values of a and alpha, so a is equal to 2 root 3 and alpha is equal to pi over 3. So substituting those two values for a and alpha, we have 2 square root of 3 sine of x plus pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3. So now we just solve for x. Dividing both sides by 2 root 3, we have sine of x plus pi over 3 is equal to half 
x plus pi over 3 is equal to the inverse sine of half, and inverse sine of half is pi over 6, or 30 degrees, but we work in radians in this question. So that means that x plus pi over 3 is equal to pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6, and so on. And this gives rise to two cases, since we're only working in the interval x greater than or equal to 0 or less than or equal to 2 pi. So pi over 3 needs to be subtracted from these values such that the value of x needs to be in the interval that I just stated. So case 1, we can take 5 pi over 6 and we subtract pi over 3 from that to make x the subject of the formula and we get the value of x uh, equal to pi over 2. And case number 2, x is equal to 13 pi over 6 minus pi over 3 and x equals 11 pi over 6. So therefore the solution is x equals pi over 2 or 11 pi over 6 radians. Question 14b, part 1. Show that sine cubed theta minus 3 over 4 sine theta plus sine 3 theta over 4 equals 0. Starting off with sine 3 theta, that can be written as sine 2 theta plus theta. Then we have the sine of a compound angle, and expanding that, we get sine 2 theta cos theta plus sine theta cos 2 theta. Now we have the sine of a double angle here, and the cosine of a double angle here. So expanding all that, we get 2 sine theta cos theta multiplied by cos theta plus sine theta outside of 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Expanding the brackets, we get 2 sine theta cos squared theta plus sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. And expressing cos squared theta in terms of sine squared theta using a Pythagorean identity, that equals 2 sine theta outside of 1 minus sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. And expanding the brackets, that equals 2 sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta plus sine theta minus 2 sine cubed theta. So collecting the like terms, we get sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. The next step is to rearrange this equation by moving all the terms on the right hand side over to the left hand side. So 4 sine cubed theta minus 3 sine theta plus sine 3 theta equals 0. And the final step is to divide all the terms by 4. So therefore sine cubed theta minus 3 over 4 sine theta plus 1 over 4 sine 3 theta equals 0 as required. Part 2. By letting x equals 4 sine theta in the cubic equation x cubed minus 12x plus 8 equals 0, show that sine 3 theta equals half. Substituting 4 sine theta for x in the cubic equation x cubed minus 12x plus 8 equals 0, we get 4 sine theta to the power of 3 minus 12 multiplied by 4 sine theta plus 8 equals 0. Expanding the brackets, we get 64 sine cubed theta minus 48 sine theta plus 8 equals 0. Dividing all terms by 16, we get 4 sine cubed theta minus 3 sine theta plus half equals 0. Subtracting half from both sides, so effectively moving this positive half over to the right hand side so it becomes negative half, we get 4 sine cubed theta minus 3 sine theta is equal to negative half. Multiplying all the terms by negative 1, we get 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta equals half. And from part 1, sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta, hence sine 3 theta equals half as required. Part 3. Prove that sine squared pi over 18 plus sine squared 5 pi over 18 plus sine squared 25 pi over 18 equals 3 over 2. From part 2, sine 3 theta equals half. Taking the inverse sine of both sides, we get 3 theta is equal to pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6, 17 pi over 6, 25 pi over 6, and so on. Dividing both sides by 3, we get theta is equal to pi over 18, 5 pi over 18, 13 pi over 18, 17 pi over 18, 25 pi over 18, and so on. Now 4 sine pi over 18, 4 sine 5 pi over 18, 4 sine 13 pi over 18 and so on are roots of the cubic equation x cubed minus 12x plus 8 equals 0. But the roots need to be distinct. 
Now, 4 sine 5 pi over 18 is equal to 4 sine 13 pi over 18, since 5 pi over 18 and 13 pi over 18 are supplementary. This is a quadrant 1 angle, this is a quadrant 2 angle. Also, 4 sine pi over 18 is equal to 4 sine 17 pi over 18 for the same reason. Hence, 4 sine pi over 18, 4 sine 5 pi over 18, and 4 sine 25 pi over 18 are distinct roots of the equation x cubed minus 12x plus 8 equals 0. Now, the sum of the square of the roots, so it's alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared is equal to alpha plus beta plus gamma all squared minus 2 outside of alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma and that's equal to negative b over a all squared minus 2 multiplied by c over a and that equals 0 squared minus 2 multiplied by negative 12 over 1 and that equals 24. Hence 4 sine pi over 18 all squared plus 4 sine 5 pi over 18 all squared plus 4 sine 25 pi over 18 all squared is equal to 24. So this is our alpha, this is our beta, and this is our gamma. So expanding the brackets, we get 16 sine squared pi over 18, plus 16 sine squared 5 pi over 18, plus 16 sine squared 25 pi over 18 equals 24. Dividing all the terms by 16, we get sine squared pi over 18, plus sine squared 5 pi over 18, plus sine squared 25 pi over 18, equals 3 over 2 as required. Question 7. Which curve best represents the graph of the function f of x equals negative a sine x plus b cos x given that the constants a and b are both positive? The strategy here is to find the y-intercept and then consider the gradient of the tangent at that y-intercept. When x equals 0, f of 0 is equal to negative a multiplied by sine 0 plus b cos 0. Now sine 0 is equal to 0 and cos 0 is equal to 1. Hence f of 0 is equal to b and b is greater than 0. Hence two answers that are not possible are options a and c since their y-intercepts are both negative. The next consideration is the gradient of the tangent at the y-intercept. f dash of x is equal to negative a cos x minus b sine x f dash of 0, so the gradient at the y-intercept, so when x equals 0, is equal to negative a cos 0 minus b sine 0. Now sine 0 is equal to 0, and cos 0 is equal to 1. Hence, f dash of 0 is equal to negative a, which is negative. Hence the answer is option D, since the gradient of the tangent at the y-intercept is negative. Question 11g. By factorizing, or otherwise, solve 2 sine cubed x plus 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 equals 0 for x greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. Factorize the left hand side by grouping in pairs. We have 2 sine cubed x plus 2 sine squared x, which forms the first pair of terms. And we have minus sine x minus 1, which forms the second pair of terms. Now with the first pair of terms, we can factorize out 2 sine squared x. So that can be written as 2 sine squared x outside of sine x plus 1. And with the second pair of terms, we can factorize out negative 1. So that becomes minus sine x plus 1 in brackets. So to complete the factorization, we can write this expression as sine x plus 1 in brackets multiplied by 2 sine squared x minus 1 in brackets. Next, we solve the equation in factor form. So we're going to solve sine x plus 1 in brackets multiplied by 2 sine squared x minus 1 in brackets equals 0. And for this equation to equal 0, either one of these two brackets or both need to equal 0. And this can be split into two cases. So case 1, we have sine x plus 1 equals 0. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get sine x equals negative 1. And therefore, x equals 3 pi over 2 radians. And for case 2, we have 2 sine squared x minus 1 equals 0. Adding 1 to both sides, we get 2 sine squared x equals 1. And dividing both sides by 2, we get sine squared x 
equals half. And then taking the square root of both sides, we get sine x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 over 2, or plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. So this means that there are going to be four angles. So we're going to have an angle in each quadrant. So when sine x is equal to positive root 2 on 2, that's quadrants 1 and 2, so x equals pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. And when sine x is equal to negative root 2 over 2, x equals 5 pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4. Combining the solutions from both cases, we have x is equal to pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 4. Question 13d, part 1. The numbers a, b, and c are related by the equations a equals b minus d and c equals b plus d, where d is a constant. Show that sine a plus sine c over cos a plus cos c equals tan b. From the left-hand side, we have sine a plus sine c over cos a plus cos c. Now a equals b minus d and c equals b plus d. So that equals sine of b minus d plus sine of b plus d over cos of b minus d plus cos of b plus d. And expanding these trigonometric ratios of compound angles, that equals sine b cos d minus sine d cos b plus sine b cos d plus sine d cos b over cos b cos d plus sine b sine d plus cos b cos d minus sine b sine d. Now in the numerator, the sine d cos b terms will cancel, and in the denominator, the sine b sine d terms will cancel. So that equals 2 sine b cos d over 2 cos b cos d. And this 2 and this 2 will cancel, and this cos d and cos d will cancel there. And that equals sine b over cos b, which equals tan b as required. Part 2. Hence, or otherwise, solve sine 5 theta over 7 plus sine 6 theta over 7 over cos 5 theta over 7 plus cos 6 theta over 7 equals the square root of 3 for theta greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. From part 1, tan b is equal to the square root of 3 a is equal to 5 theta over 7, and C equals 6 theta over 7. Solving for B, we get B equals pi over 3, or 4 pi over 3. So that's the angle in quadrant 1, or quadrant 3. Now we have values for A and C, which we have already established. So A equals 5 theta over 7, and C equals 6 theta over 7. Now again from part 1, we have two equations that relate A, B, C, and D. So a equals b minus d, and c equals b plus d. And we solve these two equations simultaneously to eliminate d. So adding these two equations together, so using the elimination method, we get a plus c is equal to 2b. Now to solve for theta. So 5 theta over 7 plus 6 theta over 7 is equal to 2 pi over 3, or 8 pi over 3. So that's doubling pi over 3, or 4 pi over 3. Adding these two fractions together, since they have a common denominator, we have 11 theta over 7 is equal to 2 pi over 3, or 8 pi over 3. Dividing both sides by 11 over 7, we get theta is equal to 14 pi over 33, or 56 pi over 33, which lie in the interval theta greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to 2 pi. Question 14d, part 2. 